Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I want to paint a magnolia and I don't think I want to do a, um, a sketch first. I think I want to get right in there with the paint so that um, we can kind of have a kind of fun, loose and easy uh, project today. I'm going to start off with some mauve here. I'm going to have it pretty watered down because I want to kind of paint the petals and then uh, add some other colors into it. So you can see I've got this really puddly, um, it's almost like the consistency of juice. It's extremely loose. And I'm gonna start by putting in some petals for a magnolia. I'm gonna start on the tip of the brush. I'm gonna press and I'm just gonna pull that color in. I'm working on um, a hot press cotton paper. So just make sure you're using cotton and you shouldn't have any problem with this technique. And I will link the reference photo from Unsplash below. Uh, I do like to paint magnolias, and I know I've done some in the past, so I just want to do a different technique. So if you're looking for more of a realistic technique, then, um, then you can check out those other tutorials. I'm just gonna kind of tip that so, um, so I just keep an even tension of water there. Now, um, again, I just want to make sure that everything is equally wet. Now I am going to blot. I need to get a paper towel. All right, I'm just going to soak up some of the excess. Because if you're if you actually have too much water on your paper, you'll notice your paint does not flow. So it's kind of it's kind of funny how that happens. All right, sorry about the glare there. I wonder if I, you know what? Maybe I'll tip it up a little bit. I was debating what paint I wanted to use. I was kind of going between Holbein and these um, this Paul Rubin paint here, but I decided I'd use the Paul Rubin paint. So I'm using the Paul Rubin paper. It's a very economical option. So now I'm going to take, I think I'll take some cobalt blue and I'm going to add some of that into the petals and just let it flow. I'm using a mop. Uh, it comes to a nice point so I don't have to worry about, um, about not being able to get detail. I'm going to grab, I'm going to clean my brush, blot it, grab a little bit more of the mauve. And I'm going to add some of that towards the bottom. Now if your brush is, if you've got a puddle of water and your brush is drier than the paper, it's going to want to soak up the water there. Now you can actually scratch in some veins if you want to at this point. Super lightly. It does not take much to scrape the paper so that it will give you that dark, fine line. If you scratch too hard, you could put a hole in it. You could pill it. Okay. I'm going to put it and do the same thing over here, a different shaped flower, but it's, it's also a magnolia. It's just the petals will be a little bit differently. Again, with the juice-like consistency. You need to have your brush pretty wet if you're using a mop, otherwise the hairs won't come to a point. And it's up to you if you want to start at the tip of the petal or if you want to, um, if you want to start at the base of the petal. And I apologize if you hear any crazy loud crashes. It is snowing on this April 3rd <laughs> in Maine and so you're hearing the snow fall off the roof. If you don't like the weather, there's a saying, is if you don't like the weather in Maine, just wait five minutes. Because it'll be different. It'll change. And we'll do this little... I love round brushes, especially thirsty round brushes, because you can get such a lovely 
variety of strokes. And so I have all these petals uh, touching. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that cobalt blue. And I'm going to add that to the tops just like I did on the other ones. Let it flow down. I'm going for a rather, rather delicate, delicate, very watercolory look here. Tip my paper and let it do its thing. I shouldn't end up with uh, cauliflowers or blossoms, and the paint's only going to flow where the paper is wet. Because I use such a big, juicy brush to do this, uh, it's staying wet long enough for things to blend. I'm going just for a very light, delicate look. Now I'm going to grab some more of the mauve. Mauve is such a pretty color. They might actually call it something different. They might call it purple or violet. I can't remember. So... You don't want it puddly. That's the only thing to remember. If you have a puddle, you're going to have a bloom or cauliflower, even on cotton paper. Cotton paper does help you avoid that. And there are some bargains out there. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I'd love to use cotton, but I just, uh, it's too precious. I, I don't want to waste it. Um, and I get that because it can be very scary to paint on really high quality paper when you're, when you're beginning. That's way too much paint. Um, because you don't want to waste it. Uh, but I have found some bargains out there. This is not terribly expensive, this Paul Rubens paper, but it, it because it's a block, blocks are always more expensive. Um, I've also found, and this can be found on Amazon, so you can kind of compare and see, but the Aqua B paper is very affordable, and you can get it, the 6 by 9 sheets, I think, are the best bang for your buck, and I always have that uh, on hand because it's such a great size for practicing and uh, testing out paints and whatnot, but you can also get it in um, the Imperial sheet. Well, actually, they have a few different sizes, but I've got it in the six by nine, and I've also bought it in the uh, twenty-two by thirty sheet, and that is um, that's excellent. You know, when you want those larger sheets of paper to either tear down or you want to paint big, but you don't want to like worry about wasting a ten-dollar sheet of arches, which actually could be more than that. Um, so I actually bought I bought a small package of it just to make sure it was the same stuff as the as the six by nine paper and I got that on Amazon because you could get it just a five or ten sheet pack pretty cheaply and then I ordered a big ream of it uh, from a school supplier once I realized that it was the same stuff. Okay, so now what I want to do is work on a uh, kind of like a branch to unify all this. And I'm going to stick with the same brush because I have to say this brush is fun to paint with. This is a, a mop. Now, this is one I've had for about 20 years. And you can see that, you know, it's had some quite some wear and tear. It's a Windsor & Newton Series 250, and it is a squirrel mop. Um, I got it as a gift. But I have found that Princeton Neptune mops are excellent. And it is also the Raphael Soft Aqua, which are completely synthetic. And um, they're cheaper, way cheaper. So um, you can find these. I just don't have a smaller size in the uh, in the Princeton Neptune mops, but definitely give those a try. I love those for bigger paintings, and um, it's really a bargain. So I'm going to start off. I want to make a nice um, kind of grayish brown. So I'm going to start off with burnt sienna, and I'm going to add some cobalt blue to it because that's a blue I've already used. And you can see they're kind of graying each other. If it goes a little green, that's fine. And I just want a little bit juicier. Oops, that's not the color I used. I want to make sure that it's going to be, it's going to allow me to float other colors into it. So this I would say is probably like a skim milk. So if we just painted with juice, I'd say this is skim milk. Okay, so the consistency of my paint. I do have my paint propped up a little bit on a uh, on another palette, actually, because I have too many palettes. Um, and I'm just going to start painting the unbloomed flowers, maybe some little buds. I've been looking for pussy willows. I haven't seen any yet. Um, it might be kind of early for Maine, but I always try to pick a branch of them whenever I... Uh, I'm going to do the leaves here because this is such a non-invasive um, color. So I'll be able to uh, force some green into there. Um, 
it's so nice to to do paintings when you see those first signs of spring. We've had such a long winter. Or it just feels really long. I'm not sure if it felt long to other people, but to me this winter was so long. I just love to add those little little buds. And using a nice shadow color like this, it, it allows you to work on your design without thinking about what color should I be putting here. You do want to work fairly quickly just because um, it's, you know, your stuff's going to dry on you. I spread my flowers out a little bit more than the reference photo because I wanted there to be a little more space to put out the uh, blooms. And I want to have some room to throw in some more leaves. This is almost like a uh, Chinese brush painting. Especially when you're working with a large mop like this. If you have a, a um, you can do your leaves either way. You can go point to tip or you can go base to tip or you can go tip to base. It's up to you. Um, it's just kind of fun just to play with the design. All right, now I'm going to grab some color. Now the key is not to have your brush too wet. I mean, it's got to be wet enough that everything comes to a point, but you don't want to be dropping like a full charge of water. I'm going to take that green. I'm using sap green. I'm going to add in a little bit of the burnt sienna. And any place I feel like I want a little bit of green, I'm going to go ahead and add it. You can see these first the first leaves are already starting to dry a little bit, so... I'm going to try to add them into some of the wet... Um, the wet washes. Especially if I see a puddle and I can see that something's starting to dry because I don't want to... I don't want to have... Uh, um, cauliflowers. Let's get a little guy over here and bring it right in there. I love using like an ultramarine or cobalt blue. I'm not sure if it'll show. I'm going to bring this up to the camera and hopefully it focuses in on it. But I love the um, the granulation that you'll start to see there. And I think you do get a little bit more of a pr uh, pronounced effect on a hot press paper because it can sit and puddle where it can't necessarily sit and puddle on a rough or a cold press paper because all those little pockets in the paper are kind of breaking up all of those little, um, those nice little granular bits so you don't really see them as much. I want to have a little, a little bit of a husk or leaf or something coming up over here. And I would like to do that over here as well. Oops. That's, I grabbed an English red instead of the burnt sienna. So if that happens, we grab the wrong color, just, just clean off your brush and keep going. Try not to, you know, it's better, it's better to waste that little bit of color you have on your brush than to, than to uh, have a discordant painting. And now I'm just going to figure out what, what else I want. I think I want another little, I think I want another branch over here, but I'm just going to start by putting in some leaves and seeing what I think. I'm going to go back in with that kind of gray color that I made. I think I need to mix a little bit more. That was cobalt blue and burnt sienna. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'll just pull it right down right from those uh, branches. For some reason that, that looks so weird on its own over here, so I just want to do something to help unify it. Throw some gray. I like those. I really like the gray um, leaves, which is kind of strange. I'm not a big gray fan, but I just like it. I think it's because the mixes, it has such interesting... Um, texture to it. And I think I'm also going to go in with my magenta. Let's see the magenta mauve. I've been calling it mauve. Really watery. And I think I'll do a few little petals kind of um, I 
and just kind of let the colors flow just to kind of weight the bottom of the picture and give us just a uh, the feeling that this tree is nice and full and it's really blooming. Now the wetter that you have something, the lighter it's going to dry. So if you did want more, um, if you want to dry it with a little more color, you can add. Oh, I love what's happening there. Check that out. Isn't that pretty? Um, so you can add more pigment. I'm going to do some kind of like charging of pigment, like grab some other colors and add some like leaves and just let them kind of fuzz. You know, let them go out of focus and fuzz into each other and give us those beautiful granulating textures and interesting patterns, but I don't really, I don't need everything to be in focus. I just want the effect of fullness. And also if you do a lighter value, you can throw these in the background. It's just going to be kind of like some supporting stuff. Now for any puddles, if I want to add, I could add a, a little splash of a little more magenta mauve color there and just kind of let it let it flow in a little bit I'm not going to add any scraping to these petals though because they are they are just they're just supporting actresses and actors they're just in there to give us a little bit of interest and texture. All right, I'm going to let this dry and then when we come back we'll we'll add some details and call it done. Okay, the painting's dry. I've got a liner brush. This is a number two liner and I want to put some detail on the flowers. What I'm going to do is take cobalt blue and the mauve and get myself a nice cool shadow color. Now that's a, probably a little dark. Now a liner is going to hold a lot of material so you don't have to reload very often which is really handy. Um, and I'm going to start uh, just by defining some of the petals. You can do veining. Um, we did some of that with our, uh, with our credit card scraping but we can define it a little bit more. I like to use my brush at a 90 degree angle with paper for the most part just because it gives me better control. I can get a like a razor fine line that way and I can also press my brush and get a thicker line. So just kind of keep that in mind if you have a hard time getting your brush control. I'm doing a hatching technique by putting a bunch of little lines next to each other to get some shading in there. And I'm actually going into my darkest colors. I'm going to turn this so I can reach a little bit better. Um, I'm going into my darker colors because I like to get those dark shades in and know where my darkest values are. Rather than working strictly light to dark. I find getting those values would be very helpful. We got our lightest lights in with our initial... Um, basically washes how we were painting our flowers. And I'm going to wet my brush here a little bit, grab a little bit more of the bluer of the mix. And just to find, if I see an edge that looks a little wonky, I'm just going to go in and see I can press and get that wider line. I'm just going in and defining a little bit. You don't want to do it everywhere because there's some beautiful things that happen when you just have that really wet paint and you allow it to do its thing. So, you know, don't do it everywhere. Just anywhere you're like, eh, that looks a little bizarre. Why? What's that? What shape is happening there? Or if you need to, like, separate one petal from another, like I'm going to do here. You know, so I pulled, push that one to kind of to the back. If I want to give this petal back here a little bit of shading, push it away from this front petal, I can do that. I almost look like I have another petal right. Like there's another one coming around there. It's your flower. You put as many petals as you want. If you see, I mean, obviously, if you're doing a really botanical, realistic painting, a flower, you know, each flower has a certain amount of petals. But if you're just, you know, you're painting a whimsical flower and 
or something that has more petals than you would be able to count, then go in and tuck a, a petal in wherever it makes sense. So that one has more definition than that one just by adding a few lines. So it doesn't take a lot. You don't want to lose that freshness and spontaneity that you have. Absolutely not. That's one of the most beautiful things about watercolor. But you do want to, um, you want to make sure you have that form there so that, so it looks, it looks as complete as you want it to be. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to look as complete as you want it. And everyone's going to have a different, um, a different amount of completion that they want. Same thing over here. Oh, I probably should have done this one first and worked my way over because I'm right-handed, so just kind of keep that in mind. Going in my veining first. I really like the edges that I have there. It was really wet, so the pigment got pushed out to the edge a little bit more, and I just really like that crispness, so I don't want to do anything to that. I also want to kind of, I know I'm going to have to probably go over those greens a little bit with some shading, so I am making sure that what I'm doing to the flowers will kind of out, give it a little bit of definition. With the magnolias, you have a, like a little more burst of color in the center, towards the center vein. The block I'm working on, I reviewed um, a few weeks, maybe a month or two ago, oh, I'm not sure. But it's the Paul Rubens Hot Press block, I think I mentioned that already. They also have that available in, um, in like just a, a larger paper bound or cardboard bound block. This one's a, almost looks like a journal. Okay. I like that. All right. Now, um, I don't think I want to do any more detail with this brush, but I do want to pull out this brush. Now, these are really fun. This is a dagger, and you can see the shape of the petal, of the, uh, the bristles kind of looks like a knife. You see that? A sword is very similar, but it has longer bristles. And I like a golden taclon one versus a synthetic squirrel because it's got a little bit more um, spring, so it's easier to do like little petals and stuff. And I thought it'd be fun to put on a few more petals. And I want kind of like a grayed green, so I'm going to do my um, cobalt and my burnt sienna and just a little bit of the sap green. Well, that's kind of a pretty color there. And you just want it, you want the paint wet enough that it's going to flow. This is also a really good brush for doing grasses and things like that. And I've kind of gone away from the reference photo. Look at just such a grateful, grace, grateful, graceful little leaf you can get. Um, I have decided to kind of do my own thing and not really go by the reference photo. So you can do the same. You can follow me. You can do your own thing. I am just making these really delicate little leaves. I think it's nice because it just gives you a little bit of a variety. And the better you get at doing these kind of imaginary um, imaginary compositions, the more creative you'll get. And that way, if you just sit down with your watercolors one day, maybe you don't have a reference photo, you can doodle something. And it's kind of the premise of my watercolor flower workshop, so you can learn how to kind of do a lot of these flowers from your imagination. Uh, I will put a link to that course in the video description along with a coupon code if you want to uh, check it out. It's a it's one of my most popular classes, and I think because it appeals to artists of all levels, it's more about um, it's more about just kind of learning how to do some of these flowers by memory, learning brush strokes. It's really good for um, just kind of building building your skill as a watercolorist. I don't know how many more of those I want to add. I think I might actually do some petals. Let me add quite a bit of water to this and do a few of the magnolia petals down here in this technique. Now again you could do tip to base or base to tip. So I'll do some base, I'll do some tip to base. And all I'm doing, that was a little too light so I'm adding a little more pigment. All I'm doing it's just pressing and dragging, and this is really nice for those types of petals. 
just a few here and there. Like there's some really magical spots there. I love how the granulation dried. It's so pretty. So I don't want to mess up. I don't want to like, um, I don't want to cover up those little magical moments. So keep that in mind. When you see those like really beautiful pieces of your painting and you don't want to cover it up, don't. Work around it. Find a way to um, enhance it or do something near it so that it draws the eye in and then the viewer gets to notice that too. Now if you wanted to glaze, you can glaze over your petals with this brush. Um, it might be a little awkward just because you used a different brush to paint them so you might not be able to pull a stroke the same way as you did when you first Did it, but what this give what this does is it almost gives you the look of um of like a translucency, like you're seeing a shadow behind the flower. I like the little surprises you can get with a dagger brush. I think it's I think it's a lot of fun. It's almost like doing calligraphy or something. This gives you a, a lyrical, um, a lyrical stroke. I don't think I want to do any with that one. I like it on that one, but I think I'll leave that one the way it is. And now I think I want to do a few little buds. I wonder if I have a small. I do have a small. No, this this is right here is called the Deerfoot Deerfoot Stippler. This is great for doing pussy willows, um, but it will give me a little bud shape, and I can see some almost like fuzzy looking buds on the. Um, uh, in the reference photo, and I'm just going to use a burnt sienna because I think honestly, compared to all these other colors, the burnt sienna does kind of look yellow. So we have a mauve, we have a blue, we have a mauve which is a kind of a red, it's purpley, but it, that would essentially be our red. We have a cobalt blue, so a red, blue, yellow would be kind of like our burnt sienna, and we're using a sap green. So I mean, we've used four colors. Um, and whenever possible, I try to stick with the colors that I've already used. And I'm just going to tap in a few of these. It's funny how vibrant that burnt sienna looks where you haven't mixed it. And it's going to dry a little bit tamer, so don't worry. And, oh, I'm going to go back to the dagger. And I'm going to go with a sap green, and I'm going to just enhance those um, buds that are kind of growing up around my flower here. Mm, let me add a little bit of burnt sienna to it. That's a little, a little darker than I intended. I mean, it's a little bit more green, I should say. When I get too much paint on my paper, what I'll try to do is like pick it up and move it around. It's like, ooh, let's just uh, take that color and put it elsewhere. With a dagger, you have the ability to, um, like if I wanted to, I could take some little, take it on the end and I could, like, I'm like, oh, that color's really bright. Now what do I do? Because I don't have really have any other bright colors here. What I can do is I can just tuck in some little wisps. And nestle things. And I mean, I could paint for miles with one load of paint because it's got so much, uh, these bristles will hold so much and it will kind of feed everything down to that tip. So that's why this is such a nice brush. You don't have to spend a lot of money for these brushes either. Any Golden Taclon Dagger, um, you know, they start at about $4 at a cra art and craft store. As long as it comes to a decent point, this is a Windsor & Newton Regency Gold. Um, this is more sold for acrylic toll painters, but it works great in this, um, in this situation. So let's give this a dry, and then you can see how it turned out. I really think this is all I'm going to do to this painting. Um, it would be really pretty on a greeting card, so if you have some of those like 5x7 Strathmore or Canson watercolor greeting cards, it's a great way to get your practice in. We did 
um, some nice stroke work with our big round. You can use a big round brush. It doesn't have to be a mop, any big round. Um, this is a number zero mop, so it would be equivalent to like an uh, eight or ten round, like a Princeton Neptune round. So just go ahead and use that. And uh, mail some lovely cards off for spring. Or do it large. Use a bigger brush. Use like one of these larger mops or, or just a larger round brush and do it on um, a big sheet of paper and make a beautiful wall hanging for your spring. Art does not have to be fussy. It doesn't have to be epic. It doesn't have to take you hours and hours. Putting brush to paper is what's important. And um, getting a little practice in every day, that's gonna help you more than anything. So there you can see it all dry. And uh, it was a lot of fun to paint. I hope you enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up if you like beginner tutorials. And until next time, happy crafting.